Oh my God. Hey, welcome to the Black Knight Nation podcast. I'm your host, Sal Interdonato, here with my co host, Steve Anderson. This is a one of a kind hey, podcast. Black Knight Nation podcast. I'm your host, Sal Interdonato, here with. That's a producer error on my part. So no, no, you're go good, bro. Black... You're good. <laughs> you know, I can't get these right, man. It, we got four people live already at 11.30 Eastern time waiting for this part two of Nate Bassman podcast. And this is our first part two, Steve, of any po- podcast. Part oh. one was so good. We ha- we need it too. And I'm we honored. need one with you, Steve. So Okay, I got a couple things I got to say right off the bat, Sal. One – I love that you guys do the podcast at 11.30 at night. Oh. Never change it. This is like night operations. It's like, I feel like I'm back in the infantry. It's like, uh, well, night, well, this is this is Army football at 11.30 Eastern Standard Time. Because as Donnie Smith was telling me, Army football never sleeps. We do <laughs> not sleep. We've got, <laughs> we've got games we've got to win, and there is no time for sleep. So I'm like, I love that you guys do this. I don't call it a podcast. I call it a night cast. It's the, it's the uh, Army yeah. Football night cast. Hey, before, <laughs> before we get started, real quick, let's thank Higher Echelon for sponsoring this podcast. Yep. Joe Ross and the crew, let's thank them for being on board. We appreciate it. Joe was a guest on our podcast about a month ago. Um, You can check our YouTube channel. Our YouTube ch- uh, subscribers are up thanks to this guy, Nate Sassaman, I think. They're up. Uh, we're up past 500 now. Oh, so um, you guys um, are going to crush this thing, Sal. You guys are going to crush it. This there's a lot of there's a lot of Army football folks out there that want to be a part of this. You're gonna you're gonna crush this thing, man. We uh, yeah yeah Steve right. We're looking for guests to come on, so we're pretty much uh um message us, throw us a a, a message on our. You could you could comment here if you like too. Um, if yeah. you guys are, if you're watching right now. Feel free to comment. We'll put your comments on. If you have any questions for Nate, Steve, or I, please send them our way. We're oh, going to way past the midnight hour here that's on the cool. East Coast. This Let's is, get this done. Dude, this um, is night ops, man. This is, <laughs> I, I love this. I got three great notes this week. I got to just highlight them. Go John ahead. Roney. You might have want to have John Roney on. He was the line. He was the team captain and linebacker the year I played. He he did all. You know he was with he was with Bob Sutton on that side of the ball. I got a great note from an infantryman called Tom Carroll, class of 78. And I just want to do a shout out. He loves army football and he is hardcore infantry. And, 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 and and we got to love those guys. And then Donnie Smith was texting me today and, you know, I was hoping to get back to that hall of fame game for his deal. It didn't work out, but he said he had a great, he had a great, he had a great time. And of course it was a big, it was a big army win. So, you know, thanks to those guys for reaching out. I, I kind of like doing this nighttime podcast kind of under the radar kind of a thing that this is totally Nate Sassaman kind of stuff right here. <laughs> yeah. And Steve, nice to meet you, Steve. And, yeah. And Nate, you're awesome. still active in the army, right? Yeah. Roger that. Yep. I am yeah. uh, right now. I'm captain promotable waiting to pin major and then head to uh, CGSC. Congratulations. Thanks for your service. And now, now I'm, pro- I'm also an infantryman. Okay. Uh, as it should be. And, and then <laughs> and then I'm a, I apologize, but did you did you carry the ball or were where were you on the army football roster? Uh I was the weak side linebacker uh my freshman and sophomore year. And then when Coach Ellison came in, I played the mic. That's awesome. So I All played right. the yeah, mic. Coach for Ellison, him. great, great human being. I got a chance to meet him. Hey, do we still do physical training in the army? I'm just asking. Do we still do that? What? Physical training. Do we uh, get up early and do PT? I mean, I'm just asking. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We all right. Steve, that. Steve, in the absence of all guidance, I'm going to say it again. In the absence of all guidance, do physical training, do live fire training, close with and destroy the enemy. That's all it's all about. That sums up CGSC right there. PT, yeah. live fire, close with and destroy the enemy. Yeah. Right. Am I right or am I right? No, I mean, look, if there's ever white space, you better be shooting weapons or uh, figuring out how to be, you know, bigger, stronger, faster, more lethal. In Please. Order to do exactly Warm my heart, Steve. Said. Don't tell me we're doing kind of like fluff stuff. Tell me we're doing some hardcore stuff out there in the force. Oh, the, yeah. No, the force no. has got to be ready. I, so I commanded in the Rakasans, Nate, 101st. Yeah. All right. All right. Uh, Spent 26 months in command there, uh, and I can tell you the 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 entire brigade, and I was in Iron Rockets, so 3187. 
Awesome. Okay. They, they awesome. got a great, yeah, great lineage. Okay, I want to come down to you're at Fort Carson, right, Steve? Yeah. I got to come down there and hang out with you. Yeah, we'll, Nate, we'll, we'll set it up, man. And yeah. I want to go do. I might want to do PT with you guys and see if you guys can see if you guys can hang with the old man. Can you believe I'll be sixty next year? Sixty years old. No, I was. Uh, I actually was just thinking, like, you know, it's it's funny because when I think of the 1985, 1984 games, right, the 1985 bowl, I'm like, yeah, that was only like 15 years ago, 20 years ago. I, I still can't believe that it's 2022. Like, I'm old. I'm 34. Like, I got, uh, I got. Were you alive? Were you alive when we played Michigan State? No, I was not. I was born. There you go. Year. There you go. Sal, yeah, there you go. There you go. It's it's the passing of the time. It's it the is. passing of the generations. I was going to say you guys have a lot in common because, you, Nate, your senior year was a, a, a great year for Army and got, got brought winning back to Army, right? And, yeah. Steve, your senior year also was – you brought – that was your thing, right? Bring winning back. So, yeah, I mean, just bring it back. And we were the first bowl win since your time, Nate. Yeah, I mean, it's and, – and I don't think people realize it takes a – Herculean effort to get there. I mean, they don't realize it. It's Herculean to get the administration, to get the coaches, to get the player, to get us all like in alignment. Dude, there's been so many dark years. Yeah. And, and, it's, and, and so when we win those deals, it's so special. It's yeah. And so I think special. that was one of the things that, um, especially at prep school and then when we were younger, um, like freshman, underclassmen, I mean, our group of guys wanted to like we all of us all of us came from winning programs in high school. Oh, I know. Yeah. And we were so sick. Now, uh, unfortunately, we never beat Air Force, we never beat Navy in my time. Yeah. But we won a bowl game and we none of us wanted to leave. We were like, look, let's just change this thing. Let's <laughs> yeah. change this thing, let's change yeah. the narrative and let's bring winning back. Man, that, that, you know, that's, you're right on Steve. I got tired of people talking about their high school careers. It's like, I don't care what you did in high school. Yeah. Go, we're here at army. We only have a, in, in that, and that, that's why that last, I mean, those first three years sucked. I mean, I know Donnie Smith is on the, on the, on the call tonight. He knows, man, you know, there's some dark, dark years in army, army football. You know, Nate, it's funny the other day, um, uh, I was curious about I was curious about something that happened like the zero and two start or something, and I went back and I looked at some of the games. Like we got shut out by Navy thirty four to zero, my my freshman year. Mm. It was I didn't know this, Nate. I never knew the stat. It was the first time since the seventies that had happened, yeah. and I was a part of that. Yeah, I know. And I didn't I know. know I was a part of that until I read I that stat the other day, and I was like, I know. Man, I'm and Steve, they do this whole thing about hey, whoever sings second. I mean, I mean, I'm, 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 I'm fairly politically incorrect. I could care less about who sings second. People don't realize you lose that last that senior game for the rest of your life. The only question people ask you is, "Oh, you played for Army? Did you beat Navy?" That's the next thing that comes out. I go, "Who cares who sings second? I'm talking about this is a lifetime game. I mean. I mean, this is a lifetime game. Um, so it's like, I don't know how to explain it. The importance yeah, I mean, of beating Navy the, is the, beyond, it's, it's, I don't know. I don't know what to say, man. The history, the tradition, the venue, what it means, you know, it's, uh, you know, I think it's, um, it's, you know, one of the things that they always say is, uh, you know, everybody on the field during those games are willing to fight for everybody who's watching them right yeah. in the stands. Yeah. Um, and, you know, it, it, historically, Nate, I don't know how you feel, and I might have missed the last podcast, but yeah, most most Army players dislike Air Force more than we dislike. Yeah, Navy. you know, there is. I'm going to tell you, there is there is some bad blood between Army and Air Force. Yeah. There's some seriously. And you can, I'm, you know, I, again, you can see it, man. Coach Monken and Coach Calhoun, they barely, I don't think they like each other at yeah. all. They barely, like, freaking shake hands at the end of the game. By the way, Michael Falowski, dude, yeah. all you need to know, Michael, is I'm taller than Doug Flutie. We were like standing <laughs> right next to each other. I'm at least an inch taller than him. But, but he did. He, he was a really great quarterback for he he was a really great quarterback. But I we did have a great game up there at Boston College in, in Natick, Massachusetts. It's beautiful in the fall. We we had and and just a side note, my 
the guy, the, the, the color commentator, I had broken my ribs earlier against Syracuse. The color commentator was Lenny Dawson. Lenny right. Dawson was my hero growing up. Hmm. I mean, I can't even begin to tell you. I got to meet Len Dawson, my hero, the day before the game uh, at Boston College. And I mean, I know my ribs were broke, but I was like, I mean, I mean, he played at Purdue. He was at Kansas City. I love the Chiefs back in the 70s. Ed Podolak, Otis Taylor. I can go through the whole lineup. It was, it, I mean, you get to play Army football, Steve. You get to meet a lot of cool dudes. Yeah, like, I, I mean, you don't really, um, you know – and when you're young like that, you don't understand that. You don't. You know, I'm walking out with Buddy Buka, right, for the Army Navy game. Yeah. Like, Medal of Honor recipient. CMH. Savage. Yeah, he's a CMH before. winner. I mean, come on. You know, come on. Uh, you know, yeah, and know. then you're, and, and um, like, I was telling some people the other day, like, hey, how, you know, they were asking questions about how does Army choose, like, what patch they wear? Like, how does it, like, it always seems like it's kind of regionally. And I was like, yeah, there's some of that, but like, what Colonel Polka made me do was I had to email all the CGs of those units that we were wearing that patch and ask permission to wear that patch and what that patch would yeah. mean for us to yeah, wear. Cool. And hmm. then they'd send a note about a deployment they were on with a unit and what, <laughs> and it's like, it's like, so it's now that I've served, I've been, you know, I've been an officer for almost 12 years now yeah. or, or 11 yeah. years. It's Steve, like, back in back in the dark ages, there were no patches, dude. It was just one one uniform for home, one jersey for away. We didn't we didn't get to wear the patches, dude. They're, the only patch I got on my white jersey, I have the cherry bowl patch on my on my white number eleven, but I didn't get to wear the patches. I would well, love that changed. To, that changed. I would love to wear the patches. When I was a junior, that's when it changed because it used to be, yeah, you know, basically like, hey, this guy wants all the linebackers to wear the SF patch because I wore. <laughs> I wore like special forces patches as a linebacker, like my freshman and sophomore year. And then the quarterbacks wore like first cavalry or something like yeah, that. Yeah. 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 There's always about, <laughs> it was always about, you know, who, uh, you know, what donor or what, who had a say on who wears what patch, what position. And then coach Ellison came in and was like, how about we make the patches actually represent something? It, yeah. It, no kidding. Yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. You know, I got a chance to talk to Coach Ellison a couple times. He's a good human being, man. Good, good guy. That's awesome. Good. Hey, um, Nate, we have, a, we have a bunch of comments from your, the last podcast. And I know that we were kind of wrapped it up and you said you had some stories about Jim Young. Uh, she had some more stories to talk to us about Jim Young. Um, I don't know if, you, I don't know if we, I don't know if we go there to kind of get the conversation, you know? Yeah. I'm cool with that. I mean, I think I said, <laughs> I mean, I'm going to tell you something right now, coach young and coach Monken. I mean, come on, man, come on. These guys came in and did a Herculean effort to turn the program around. And I, and I, I don't know coach Monken as well as coach young. They got to be super intense guys. I mean, coach young, when I met him, the most intense person I think I've ever met in my entire life. We're, we are losing to Air Force at halftime in the first ever night game at Mikey Stadium. We're both ranked in the top 25. I think we're losing like 12 to 5. He probably gave the best halftime talk of all time. I wish we could have like filmed it. And, and, you know, I mean, it was just like we were ready to like it was like the Battle of the Bulge kind of stuff. We were ready to like break it down and run through the Germans after that, man. And it was, and, and so, I mean, this guy was, I mean, you, these are special people because it's a hard place to recruit and then bring, and then bring kids in and then they got to pass the courses and make it through West Point And then they got to play good ball and they got to play against some pretty good teams. This is huge. It's a, it's a Herculean effort. And I can remember in the eighties, people going, uh, yeah, you know, it's never going to be, you guys are going to never win here. You know, you know, this, the time has passed. It's, you know, army was about the forties and the fifties. It's, it's too late now. It's not going to happen. And it's like, no, no, it's not. And you see it in the eighties and you see it again, you know, in the, in the two thousands with, with coach Monken and the team you played on Steve. And, but it takes a huge, huge effort. Um, coach allowed me to flip the play. 
I could not audible. We talked about this last week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I audibled one play my entire senior year at Syracuse. We scored a touchdown. I'm jogging off the field. I can still hear him screaming at me about changing the play. <laughs> now, I was allowed to flip the play from left or right. But come on, man. This was – and you got to understand, I think, Sal. you got to understand this, Sal. He – this doesn't happen anymore. He he was a – he liked to sling the ball. He's from Purdue. They had Scott Campbell. They had another – they had another tall quarterback who went to the pros. He's a gun – he's a gunslinger coach. He wants to sling the ball. And and we don't do very good. We go two and nine. We lose to Harvard. I mean, it's 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 a terrible. We lose to like maybe we even lose to I don't know VMI. It's terrible. Nah, nah. It's terrible. And and he changed. They go down to Auburn. He spends a week with Pat Dye and the entire staff. Bo Jackson, the whole deal. Oh, there you go, Mike. You know I don't know who this Michael Falowski guy is. You're right, Mike. Mark Herman, man. He's a gunslinger. And so coach is coaching these five and seven step dropbacks. And that's what he puts in the first year. And I, I'm like, go, I'm over on defense. I'm not doing that. I'm a, I'm an option quarterback. So I'm, I'm returning punts. The next year they go down to Auburn. They spend a week with the staff. They come back up. They put in the, they put in the, the option. That doesn't happen anymore. Head coaches are certain guys. So they get fired and they just go to the next deal and they they're running their deal. They're not changing their offense in the middle of their head coaching season. So the pressure to win was through the roof for him. I mean, he actually, he actually had me over to his house. I sat there with him, Jane and their son. I mean, I'm like, he's like coach Blake. I'm like in fear of coach young. I'm not saying <laughs> nothing. I'm like afraid to make sure I'm using the right fork in the spoon. I'm not saying nothing. And he's just going, this is how I think. This is what I'm thinking when I see this. I mean, it's all football. We ain't talking about like, there's no discussion about like life or or what. There's just football, football, and then more football. And, 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 <laughs> well, Nate, it's, it's funny you say that because my freshman year, we had Coach Brock as the head coach. Yeah, I know. And I know Stan Brock. Stan's yeah. from my, he's from, uh, his brother, his youngest brother was my center on my high school team from Portland, Oregon. What, what was who? What brother was that? Go figure. And his yeah. youngest brother, I can't remember the kid's name. He went to LSU. He was a year behind me. Pete, not Pete Brock. Was Pete Brock your son? No, seven? Pete. Pete went and played in the NFL. Stan was in the NFL. I can't remember the youngest brother, but he was mm. with me at in high school in Portland, Oregon. I know Stan. We yeah. We've I, from, I you know huge huge respect for Stan Brock. Yeah. He, did, he did exactly what you just said. Yeah. But it was more, it was, I think it was more of, it was more pressure, but like coach, we ran the pro style and then my sophomore year, all of a sudden we're running the triple option quarterback Had change, to. you Had know, to. position. I mean, and the same thing happened with coach Ellerson, even though we were running triple option, coach Ellerson ran a different triple option. And all of a sudden we had linebackers playing offensive line, offensive line. You know, we had, yeah. I'll leave it on the way of a Martin playing wide receiver. Ooh, it's a hard he, deal, he man. Was too big to play line in 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 the just triple option, so he yeah. played wide receiver. Yeah, I don't want to like I don't want to go down the negative path, but when they did that whole Southern Illinois thing with Coach Barry, it set back Army football like twenty freaking years. Yeah, it was. Uh, but we're not going to talk about it tonight. You nah, we, it that's not that's day. not for this podcast. But that's yeah. why I'm telling you, Nate. Was, we have we have we have people that we've had on this podcast that don't even say that name. Yeah, well, I'm just telling you, it's so hard. Nobody understands how hard it is to win an army. This is not this is not easy. This right. is the, the stars have to line up, and you bring in somebody who wants to like I don't know, change it up and do something wacko. It sets us back decades. Yeah, yeah, decades. Anyway, yeah. we're good. Yeah, yeah. We're in a good spot right now. I mean, we got a great. I mean, come on, man. I mean, people are like, oh yeah, they're zero and two, dude. Come on, nobody's getting beat seventy to seventy-seven to seven right now. So relax, all right. We're yeah. we're. I don't, in, think, I don't think anybody. Really I, don't think anybody's, uh, I don't think anybody's. You know, breaking the glass right now. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm I'm impressed. I can't even. If we were to talk about the current day, I mean, I'm just so impressed with Coach Monken and the staff and the players and everything that's. It's 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 been it's been awesome. It's been awesome. 
Hey, I got to ask you a question about the Cherry Bowl, if you don't mind. All right, let's go to the Cherry Bowl. All right. All right. How about Bill Carl- Jones, a great, 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 great young man, a great man, <laughs> and I love playing for him, but but I did kind of fear him, Sal. It wasn't like yeah, he said, yeah. there was no buddy-buddy relationship. There was like coach and then there was like Nate. <laughs> there was no, there was none of this. And actually, Charlie Taft, God bless his soul, I think he protected me from Coach mm. Coach Young a couple of times because Coach wanted to like flame me out. I mean, I get it. I mean, there's a lot of pressure. People don't understand it. I get it. All right, Cherry Bowl 1984. Hey, I have an Army fan that I know that wanted to ask you the question about the Cherry Bowl and playing against Carl Banks back then because Carl Banks was almost like the L- the LT of, you know, Michigan Dude. State, so to speak. Dude, all those guys on Michigan State defense were legit. Like five of them went to the NFL. I mean, it was like, are you kidding me? I mean, I mean, this is the Big Ten. I mean, it, it, we're not playing like Villanova. We're, we're, we're playing – or Colgate. It's like – we're playing, oh, George Pearls. What did he do? Win four Super Bowls with the Pittsburgh Steelers? I mean, oh, do you know who the D.C. was for Michigan State? The defensive coordinator was this little-known coach called Nick Saban. You don't think that they had this thing schooled that, that day? Dude, it was brutal. That was a brutal battle. I, I always like to say Tennessee was one of the like the most physical game against – for but. I don't know. You got to talk to Donnie and Ron and some of the guys on the offensive line. The Michigan State dudes came. They they came to play, dude, and they were physical. Yeah, that was a physical, physical game. Ten six, right in a bowl game final. Ten six. I know. I know, dude. dude, You know know. what struck me a little bit? I listened to the first podcast again today. Yeah, the Army. You said an Army Navy game you played in was three to three. Well, no, three to three. My freshman year. My wow. freshman year, my senior year, my three to three. Oh, aren't Navy's going to the Liberty Bowl? They play Ohio State in in, in my freshman year. We tie them three to three. My freshman year, no, my, three. Se- my senior year, we beat Navy. We we beat them with a stick. All right, they have no. We beat them twenty eight to eleven. It ain't. It's not close. Um, we score in every quarter. It's a solid performance, and it's the first time we beat Navy like in seven years. So it's kind of a big deal. But the bowl deal. The bowl deal was a tough deal. And, you know, I really wish we could have played better. We could have scored more points on them. But they were – dude, they were physical, man. They beat on us. I'd I, I like to know what, like, Don and – Donnie Smith and, and Ron Rice and Vince McDermott and Jeff Karsanovich and Carl Heineman would think about up front. But, man, it was – I just remember it being a really, really physical game. I would have liked to beat him 28 to six, but <laughs> it just, it, it didn't, it didn't happen. Yeah, you're right. Michael Filoski, whoever he is, he gets the, he is the award for army football history. Joe Sarniano is our punter. And I don't know what he averaged. He set a record that day for his punting average. against Wait, Navy It was an MVP. The it's punter ridiculous. was the MVP. Yeah. It's that ridiculous. Nuts. I mean, and he's a great, Joe's a great athlete and a great, great man. And yeah, he, he, yeah, man, those are, those are the dark ages. Those are the dark ages. True. You're right. You're right. But then that senior year, right. We, we, we yeah, talked about senior, so year, much. We, senior year, everything kind of lined up, but um, yeah, whoever your friend is that Michigan state defense was legit and Carl Banks was legit, but they also had both their linebackers went to the pros and they had a couple of uh, their defensive backs went to the pros. Wow. We, we were in, we were, you know, just like Tennessee, Tennessee and Michigan State, we are in over our heads, man. These are legit, legit players. And and I think it's just a testament to the preparation by the staff and kind of just the persistence and the grit of the team that we are going to fight through this thing. But no question, that bowl game was a war. That that was a battle. Yeah, I mean, you, you know, the you talk about the preparation and everything, but it's got to, you know, you guys got to have confidence going to that game. You know what I mean? And then the execution. I mean, you're talking 10-6. Steven, I mean, but you know the deal. It's the opportunity to play. That's why we go to West Point. That's why we go to play Army football. I'm not going to Army to play Colgate. I'm going to Army to play Michigan State and to yep. go to a bowl game. And then, you know, we rise up. That's We are not quitting. We're going to go down. We If we go down, it's going to we're taking everybody down with us. And, yeah, that was it. We just – I think you're right, Steven. We see it as an op- – an amazing opportunity 
to get to play against some of these big time programs. And and Joe and Jim Young was right. He said he I I I I'm like at the dinner table right now with Jim Young 40 some years ago. And he's going, Nate, here's the deal. We are shrinking the game to the fourth quarter. We want to be within seven points. I want you to use as much clock as possible. String out the drives. Make it so that when we get, make it so that, <laughs> make it so that when we get to the fourth quarter and we're within seven points of a Michigan State or a, or a, or a Tennessee, a team that we have no business, Boston College, we have no business being on the field with, they might choke. They might start to choke. And then we just keep doing what we do. And we see where the we see where the cards fall. And he's right. He was right. And that there was John right. Smith saying the play selection at Michigan State totally confused. Brilliant play calling. Yeah. Hey, uh, I called up the, the 1984 Cherry Bowl on the old Wikipedia. It says Nathan Sassaman rushed for 136 yards on 28 carries. Yeah, I paid the price. So everybody else went out and paid. <laughs> everybody went. Everybody else went out and partied that night. You want to know what Nate Sassman did? He laid in a bathtub for like two hours and went to bed. I was beat to death. Those those guys, dude. I'm five ten, one eighty. Give me a break. I'm just getting smoked by these legit dudes. And 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 that's why I'm telling you, get under center against Tennessee. You get under center against Michigan State. Tennessee, I'll remember, never rem I'll always remember, Charlie Taft goes, Nate, you graded out 23 of 25 on the triple option plays against Tennessee. I mean, I'm not great at math, but I think that's 92%. But, you know, West Point grading scale sucks. That's like an A- minus at West Point. I'm like, 92? <laughs> Come on, I should get a – that's a solid A. But at West Point, it's like an A- minus or B+. Plus. It's ridiculous. <laughs> but it's like you had to be on your A game or it was over. You had to be on your A game. And that's what I loved about the triple option. And I'm going to go back. If we don't have Doug Black, if we don't have the offensive line that can block it, and we don't have an inside threat, you have to have an inside threat. That's what opens it up. And I'm fascinated with this inside and outside threat. And it goes back to the Heisman days when you had Glenn Davis and Doc Blanchard and you had Doc Blanchard as the inside and you had Glenn Davis at, as the outside. Now I know it's different. Mr. Inside, Mr. Outside. But the concept is still the same. The hmm. concept is still the same. So, I mean, come on. It's, it's, Deep. I mean, I know there's a lot of teams out there with fancy offenses and they, they sling the ball around and all that. Hey man, if we're good at blocking and tackling and we got a quarterback who can read the triple option and we got guys who want to run downhill. We're gonna do. We're gonna do fine. We're gonna do. We're gonna do fine. But, but Sal, like you said, Greg Ballard's a gunslinger. Rob okay, Healy no, was yeah. a gunslinger. Yeah. Ronnie Mikado is a gunslinger. Yeah. I want to be a gunslinger, but I'm never gonna. I'm not gonna be one of those guys. <laughs> dude, dude. I want to be the gunslinger. <laughs> Ten yards passing in that cherry ball, man. Ten yards. One for one. No, no. One for two. I I passed one to the free safety. And I passed one to, to Jarvis. <laughs> and the play that I passed to Jarvis was a run play. And I got caught in a little bit of trouble. And I just flipped it to Jarvis. It wasn't even a called pass play. Because once I – Jim Young calls the first pass play. And I throw it to – I can't remember his, his last name. But it was a guy named Phil. He actually – you know, free safety for Michigan State. He, he catches it. It's awesome. So I'm one for one for the other team. And then they don't call a pass play for the rest of the game, Sal. And then I got in some trouble and I flip it to Jarvis and he gets 10 yards and a, and a first down. So, yeah, you, come on, man. I think sometimes throwing the ball is a little overrated. <laughs> well, you and Jeff Munkin think the same thing, I think. Yeah, you know, he's had more games, I think, where they don't even throw the ball once. They go the whole game without throwing it and they just they just run people into the ground. Yeah, so the Villanova game that they just won, it was their fourth game under Jeff Munkin where they did not complete a pass and won the game. Are you kidding me? No. On Saturday? Yeah, they did not complete a pass. They threw one pass incomplete. Good play by the Villanova defensive back on the deep pass. And no no passing yards. Four hundred. Yeah, you know why, you know why, Sal? We don't want to give away our passing game. We wanna we wanna keep that. It's we wanna just run the ball. 
Make stop us stop the run before we show the defense our passing game. <laughs> the first two games, but you kind of let all those passing plays out, didn't you? Or a lot of, I know. But I mean, from what I, I like, I, I just like to look at the box scores, and it it looks like this kid who's at quarterback can throw the ball, and they got people who can catch it, and I think that's amazing. I mean, I think that's awesome because you're going to be playing Navy, you're going to be playing Air Force. I'm, you know, I'm out here out west. I watch the Air Force every now and then. They sling the ball. They throw it. They they throw little, it. They don't just bit, run they, it. They, they had to. They throw it. They had to against Wyoming last week, and that didn't go so well for them. Um, it, they it, have a tough time up there. Yeah, they didn't. Um, they have a tough time. Look, but you anytime, know, anytime Navy, Army, and Air Force are slinging the ball around more than they should be, that usually means they're not. They're not in the position. They're not in the position they want to be in. Yeah, good, Steve. Yeah, good comment. Yeah, Steve. Yeah, Steve, yeah. remember this? The game in 2018, we had the Mod Bradshaw on the podcast, and he he told us a little bit about that game where they won 21 nothing, and they didn't, they did not uh, they just ran the ball against the Air Force. Yeah. Yep. Well, was, I'm going to tell you, Sal. There's not one time when I came over to the sidelines and said, "Hey, coach, we need to throw the ball." That never came out of my mouth. <laughs> you never you never heard me like now. Rob Healy, go ask Healy. He'll go. Yeah, he wanted to sling it on every play, but me. I'm like, I never said anything. Hey, whatever you guys want to do, just let me know. <laughs> can, can I ask the triple option, right? What do you think is the, the most important or the, the key in reading the triple option? Because sometimes you look at the way, you know, um, Army runs, and sometimes you you look at the slot back saying, pitch me the ball, pitch me the ball. But what, what's the key in the reads in your mind? Sal, it's a different game now. I mean, I can't imagine being in the shotgun and getting the snap. I was under center. It was like, boom, boom. You saw the defensive tackle either came down or came up filled. I mean, now I feel like they got, they got like an eternity to read the tackle to the, to the end. But, you know, maybe I'm wrong. I've never done a triple option out of the shotgun. So hmm. I'm like, I can't even imagine it. Because when you're under center, it's like, boom, boom. You're making rapid fire um, decisions. And I'm going to tell you um, – I got to I, I got to tell you I think it's just the court, the quarterback is the guy. He's got to be able to make pretty quick decisions. Yeah, I mean it's 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 uh, you know, it's eyes and reps, right? It's like your eyes have got to be in the right spot. You know, I've never I don't even want to like I mean when they when we started it, coach Young out on the old field. Now this is before they had the indoor facility, Steve, when you guys had all the nice accoutrements. Oh, when yeah, we yeah. were out there on the we're out there on the field where people park their cars. We would be like, there'd be like glass and all kinds of stuff from the game. And we're like on Monday practicing out there. They painted the stripes for the inside and the outside veer. Inside, outside. And so Doug Black and I probably practiced it, I don't know, 10,000, 15,000, 20,000 times. I don't know. It was just like... You know, it's the same deal with live fire training. Yeah. You're just like training so that it's like right now. And you're Reps not. And I, and I had a chance to, it's another lifetime, but I had a chance to speak with a guy named Tom Brady a while back. And he talked about how he wants to spend thousands of repetitions on the plays so that when he's in the game, 90% of the time it's neck up yeah. because his body already knows what to do yep. on every single play and that's really what we were doing in 1984 with the triple wow. option wow I no I mean, and i you know and um that's what that's you know i'm a huge believer it's it's what higher echelon does but it's cp at west point i mean um it started with coach ross joe ross and then it went yeah. to uh you know uh major tillman and, and major chadwick but they had me in there the big big old screen Right, I'd get in my stance and I would watch the first second of a play. Yeah. And it would be my read and I would know where to go. Yeah. And all that stuff. And that was that was ways to get more reps. When, reps. And this was just during the school day. This is if I had a break during school. I know. Rep it, man. Right. Rep it. You gotta rep it. Hey, yeah. like Donnie Smith said, Army football never sleeps. We gotta be repping all the time. <laughs> all right. I'm just that's the way it is. Oh, yeah, we got we got the comments all 
they, if you guys, if you're watching and you have any questions or comments for Nate, Steve, or I, please uh, post them. Uh, we didn't get a chance to talk, and I thought having Steve on would be a good chance to talk about what life after West Point for you, Nate, and what that was like. Um, I know that you've written a book about it, and I know yeah. you were a very decorated uh, you know, Army officer. And yeah. just, uh, how much did you take your being an Army football player – and after you graduated West Point out into the field as an infantry officer. Yeah, I know. It's interesting. Um, so like my mom is a music teacher. She's in, she's 84 years old right now. She still, she still plays the, or so I was forced to play the piano and the trombone at a very early age. And I'm not musical at all. And what I kind of got out of that whole experience was poise because I had to play in recitals. I had to do so trombone solos at my church. And even though I wasn't really good at it, I was able to develop a poise. And I think that's what kind of came out of Army football was we need people in combat to have poise. Nobody wants to be led by a spastic. So you have to have this kind of like just poise and calm and clear determination. So every night in Iraq at 1800, we did the Fighting Eagle update across the entire province, thousand square kilometers. And all I wanted was soldiers to hear clear, cool, calm, confident voices of what is happening, what we're doing in the next 24 hours, where our operations are at. Because it's a hard deal. Combat is a hard deal. And we don't need spastics on the radio or in command. We need guys that have been through the fire of 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 the fire of piano recitals, trombone solos, and Army Navy football games in the field, leading so leading young people, 18, 20, 22 years old, and they're they're confident in 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 what they're what they're hearing and seeing from their leaders. And I think that's the that I mean, there's a great book out there. I mean, I, I teach leadership all the time. The obstacle is the way. And and Ryan Holiday in the book talks a lot about developing poise and this clear this clear calmness and confidence when you're leading your organizations in chaos and adversity and and if you haven't had the trials and we have i mean we've had the trial you know i love i love shackleton's way too he talks about the the you know being in the antarctic what's your antarctic steve and i and people who've been through the army football deal you you've been through the you've had the antarctic you've had the experience so you have you have what it takes to lead soldiers in a clear, cool, calm, poised, confident way, and 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 I don't know how to quantify that, but it's huge because nobody wants to be led by a spastic or led by somebody who's like tanking hard in chaos and adversity, and that's what I think Army football West Point provides it, but you know you put Army football on top of West Point. There's just an extra dose there of, of poise. And then, and then, and then you're having to play some serious football games against some serious football opponents. This isn't a joke, man. This is, this is real. And it carries over into command and into leading infantry soldiers in, in combat. And that's why, that's why MacArthur set up the intramural program at West Point. We need to put people under stress. We need to put them in, put them in situations where their character is being challenged. So we can find out how they're going to be. Yeah, just uncomfortable. You're talking yeah. about guys that, yeah, you know, you're talking about guys that didn't come to West Point to be an athlete, and now all of a sudden they got to find a sport to be an, an athlete in. Yeah. Or, oh. or they have to be a ref who all the athletes yell at when they yeah. screw up calls. Or they got to go to boxing and get their nose punched in. Oh my God! I was just in, like six weeks. We just had our, we just had our, we, you know, I was in a, a group chat. I think it was yesterday. And we were just talking about how what we did was in summer school, they did, we did boxing in in four days, the entire <laughs> semester. So it was four like days? four days. Oh we my did, God. It was like four hours of boxing for four days. We just punched each other in the face, <laughs> and it was all football players. I mean, we got Josh McNary. I, I was just telling him one of the most impressive things I've ever seen was Josh McNary literally jumped in the ring so he could right hook Ali Villanueva in the face at 6'10". 
Um, yeah, hey, that, I've met I've met Mr. Villanueva. He's he, he's a lovely human being. Yeah, me and him were captains together my junior year. Dude, he's so, gigantic. He's gigantic. Yeah, there's a <laughs> when he's you know I'm a I'm a really big Ravens fan. So he finished his career as a Raven. Yeah, and uh, there's a picture of us in Annapolis um, during Navy Grad Week. Um, my my brother uh, was, is a chef in a restaurant up there. So yeah. I went to his restaurant. Uh, went out with his wife, my wife, and there's a picture of me hugging him, and it's just like he's literally a foot taller than me. Coach Coach Monken brought me out the first spring to kind of be a spring football coach for the or spring whatever oh, for the for the spring game, game captain, spring yeah, game whatever captain. it was. And yeah, yeah. and Villanueva's there, and he brought in the guard that played next oh, yeah. to the Pittsburgh Steelers. I got a picture. There's like a hey, dude no class seven, hey, he's and he's six ten, and I'm five ten. I'm like it's a like, but I was always the smallest guy. That's why I love my offensive linemen. I mean, they, I, 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 I'd love that. Sal, I know we're, we're running probably getting towards the end. I just got one more story, and then and then we can go wherever you want to go. But I got I to gotta tell this. Oh, wait, we have a question. We have oh a God, question. Michael. We get to this question by Michael? Yeah. So, so it's funny because my roommate is back at West Point, and he goes, they're having a huge tailgate. Um, what do they call it where it's down by the, it's down by the river, oh, man, I'm, I apologize. I'm so old, but they, they're having a huge cadet tailgate down at the, down by the river. And, 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 and they're like, they cannot believe the team is close. And, and, and so like, um, and so like we come back and we tie the game with like a minute left and, and I, and I'm with, I'm with coach young. We talked about it when I visited with him in Tucson he was like, you know, Nate, if we if we had gone for two and didn't get it, it would have been another loss. But if we tied, it was a victory. And if you look at some of the papers, it's it's the classic headline, Army beats Tennessee 24 to 24, because we're like 30 point um underdogs. And and so and and so Michael, we're coming back from the game from Tennessee. We land in Newburgh, New York, and and I don't know, the streets are lined with people. It's out of control. You know how it is like in central area or north area? It is crazy. <laughs> and, and I mean, it's crazy. And I remember, I forget who the beat writer was for the, the Newberg paper, but I just looked at, he was peppering me. I said, dude, get, get ready, man. We're going to have a great year because nobody thought we would even be able to play with these guys down here. And so I, I always point to the Tennessee game as the pivotal point in the transformation of Army for football in the early 80s. Because we get we get smoked 1980 to 1983. 84, it's a different story. And 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 you can I, we can go through it, we can analyze it all you want, but it is over the over the top crazy at the academy for kind of that entire that entire and, and frankly, I'm just kind of like a Average football player for like the first three and a half years. And then all of a sudden I have this great six months. And, and here's another side note, Steve and Sal, they like the, 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 the army brass comes to me and they go, Hey, you want to be like the regimental executive officer? I'm like, what are you even talking about? Because I'm a cadet private. <laughs> I'm a cadet private during football season. I sit, I'm staying at the end of the formation because dude, I'm playing ball, man. One one hundred percent. I'm trying to pass my classes. I'm trying to pass my classes, but I am all about ball, dude. I'm a baller. We and so I'm cadet private, and then my senior, my second semester, I'm the regimental commander, executive officer, and I'm calling out the the commands at the parades. Come on, man. Seriously. <laughs> I just call him as I see him, Michael. That's all I do. I just call <laughs> oh him my God. I, I could go on and on. My last story, and then and then we'll you know, everybody's got a great Army Navy story. I mean, you gotta have it. Mine is not on the field. Mine is 1997. I think I think it's the game where it's pouring rain at the Meadowlands, and we are losing 21 to 3 at halftime. Ronnie McCade is the, the quarterback. I think I'm right on this. I might be off by a year or so. 96. 96 would be Ronnie senior. Is it 96 guy. when they're like, it's pouring rain. I we're believe. losing 21 to three. And I'm looking, I go, hey, I'm going to go get a hot dog. 
So I get in line to get a hot dog. No lie. This is no lie. Three people in front of me. I'm looking at the dude and I'm doing like triple, quadruple, quintuple checks. And I go, that's Glenn Davis. That is Glenn Davis, Army Heisman Trophy winner, as sure as I'm standing here. So I move up three people and I go, hey, and I go, hey, sir, are you Glenn Davis from Army football? He's got a top coat and a hat. So it's like, he's kind of like under disguise. And he goes, yeah, he goes, yeah. it's Glenn Davis. I stand in line with Glenn Davis. I buy Glenn Nate Davis a coffee and a hot dog. And he and I spend about 10 minutes talking army football. Cause I got a bra. I love having a brat. I like a brat and I got a, and I got a, I got a hot chocolate. And so we're sitting there having, we're just standing there. And I get to talk to Glenn Davis for 10 minutes about Colonel Blake about Doc Blanchard, about some of the games that he played in. Wow. And I'm like, dude, th- those are precious moments, man. You can't get – those are – that's that's my favorite Army-Navy yeah. story. And I know – I mean, we had a great Army-Navy game, and we, we did a really nice job of beating them up that day. But I love that I got a chance to talk to Glenn Davis for 10 minutes at the Army. And then Ronnie McKay to come back and they win the game. They win the game in that pouring rainstorm – losing 21 to three. And I'm like, is the world right or not? That was a good day for you. You can take me now. I'm good. (laughs) All is is right with the world. I talked to Glenn Davis at halftime. Ronnie McKady comes back and they beat Navy in a driving rainstorm. I'm like, come on, does it get any better than this? This is, I'm good. I'm done. My work, my work is done Uh, here. Everything else is bonus for the rest of my life. Bonus. Yeah. I don't, it's not Army Navy, but I got to when I was in the Rockassans, uh, Pete Dawkins was our guest speaker at a yeah. brigade call. And my brigade commander knew I'm I'm a die everybody know anytime anybody meets me, they're always like, This is the biggest army football fan. Like the the joke is like, Hey Steve, did you play army football? Because <laughs> there's always Steve, you look like a big guy. How big are you? What's your size? What'd you uh, play I'm at? still I'm still two forty. What 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 how tall are you? I'm only five ten. I'm right there with you, Nate. All right, good for you, man. Awesome. Yeah, yeah that's 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 the army football. But I got to I got to escort Pete Dawkins around. Oh man. I picked yeah. him up at the airport. I drove yeah. him around. I drove him around. We talked. Good dude. Good we dude. talked. Uh, I mean, he's been on our podcast. He's uh just a really great um I mean, and that's the beauty of army football. It Come really on. is. That's and why we the, do this. And the army is the backbone of the United States military. We do the work. I mean, when I was in Iraq, there were Marines and there were Army. I didn't see anybody else. And frankly, I could tell you some stories about the U.S. Air Force that would probably make, that would turn your stomach sick. And I'm not going to talk about it. But I will say this. The British Air Force supported the 1-8 Infantry in Iraq. It was not the United States Air Force. It was the freaking British Air Force who fucking ran missions for us at night in combat in Iraq. And so I got some really, really strong opinions about certain things based on that, based on that experience over there, but you got to love it. Pete Dawkins, Glenn Davis, you know, the the stories about Colonel Blake, you know, I got a chance to meet Monk Myers. I mean, this is what it's all about. Yeah, no. And, and I mean, and, and you, and you know, Sal mentioned it. I mean, this is one of the reasons we do the podcast. We're going to kill it. We're we, going to kill this podcast. We just, you know, me and Sal have been doing this for, you know, five, six years now, and we just love it. Yeah. We love having, we sure. love having Nate Sassamans on. Well, I, I, I mean, I wanted to say just, I wanted to thank you and Sal because it really warms your heart. It really warms my heart that you guys reached out. And Sal, I know I'm a hard guy to get a hold of. I don't, I, I'm a hard guy. I don't, I don't, I, so I appreciate your grit and your persistence on staying with me on that. Um, it has really warmed my heart that you guys tracked me down and and had the patience to have me well, on. Well, you're not that far from me, Nate. So you better. Yeah, no, I'm gonna come down to four. I'm gonna come down to Fort Carson. Yeah, you guys. We better you're do some freaking PT, Steve. I'm not going over the old club and having a sandwich. Yeah. We need to be. We need to be freaking. <laughs> Whatever run, you want. We need to run up Como Hill a couple of times. Let me um, know. Let me know. I'm around. <laughs> You know, we could and, probably do a part three, Nate, but we'll, we'll keep it at two for yeah, now. But, you, know, I mean, there's, is- you know, there's, you know, you might want, there's a lot of people out there. I think that you are going to blow this out, Sal. If you're going to blow it out, I, I can tell you right now, 
there there are a lot of people out there who love Army football, and they have. And, Look at and, this, and, number eleven. You are the best. These are fans coming out for you, Nate. <laughs> Davis Dawkins, uh, yeah, that's, that's Blanchard, it. Joe Steffi, Sassaman. Put Sassaman. Yeah, on. yeah, yeah. Okay. You know what? I'm just honored to have had a chance to be there and be a part of it. It's all about the journey. Army football fans are 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 in a kind of a category of their own. We've had to go, you know, we're not like some of the other programs where every year it's a good year. There's some hard years. And Steve and I have played on those hard teams. And that's kind of what makes you. And that's why we we relish that the, the great years are precious. They're yeah. precious. And we appreciate it more than we appreciate it more than most folks. But I think your podcast is going to do amazing. There's a lot of folks out there who want to hear this, Sal. And, and I just, you know, you guys just be persistent. And 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 stay with it. I'll be back another time. But you got a lot of other. There's a lot of other great folks and players associated with this program. That would yeah. be that would be awesome to have. And tonight, oh my God, look at Michael and all these guys that are that are Donnie Michael, and all these yeah. guys that are texting in. And it's a, and what is it? What is it? Is it is it past one a.m.? Uh, no, what it's twelve twelve twenty five on the twelve twenty five. It's but, 12, but this is army. This is, this is how we do our operations. I mean, <laughs> I can't even begin to tell you. I, we didn't do anything during the day. It's all night. We 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 are nighttime operations. So don't change yeah. the time, Sal. 1130 <laughs> PM Eastern standard time is, is army football nightcast. That's how you do it. I like it. Hey, you know what? Our next guest is going to be, our next podcast is going to be on Sunday. And I don't know if you know, Jody Glore. Do you know Jody Glore? He played in the he played in the 60s. He's a 1969 grad. He played linebacker. Uh, 1968 team, I think, was one of the pretty good teams for Yeah, now I know Raleigh Stitchway. So oh, Raleigh we, reaches like out to get me. Raleigh, on, Raleigh yeah. was one of the quarterbacks in that in that era. Great, A great quarterback. So Raleigh's been very kind to me. He's he sent yeah, me a couple, like to of get Raleigh on, yeah. a couple of night, n- notes. And, and I talked about that last week. That 67 Sugar Bowl team. I mean, how cool would it have been? If the Army would have let that team go to the Sugar the first ever bowl game would be Army in the Sugar Bowl. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, man. That's yeah. a no-brainer. But I'm not, we're not, you know, I'm not gonna do any Monday morning quarterbacking. But he played during a great era with um, you know, I think uh, you know, we I'm not gonna talk about it, but when Glenn Davis and I had that conversation, we shared some stories about Coach Young and Coach Blake. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of similarities. <laughs> You got Coach Cahill, you got Coach Young, you got Coach Monken. I mean, there's there's some cool things coming out of those stories with those yeah. with those coaches. And you know who else? Um, back in the '60s, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it was late '50s. Paul Dietzel also coached the yeah, Army. Yeah, he, yeah, yeah. He went Dietzel. to have a pretty good career, I believe, at LSU. If my yeah, head. Coach Dietzel. Yeah. yeah, and and his son then was on staff at West Point. Yeah, I'm pretty sure his son was on staff. At, you at you, you never you never um, coached at West Point even at, as as no a guy. no I'm you know what Sal I'm gonna be really I mean I'm pretty on I'm a pretty pretty authentic guy West Point was really hard for me it was I didn't have fun there people are like I hear people go I had a great time I did not have a great time right. I suff- I suffered at West Point I worked really hard to pass my classes I worked really hard I wanted to get the hell out of there as soon as possible. So no, I was not staying one second longer. <laughs> I was out, and I, I'm yeah. trying to keep it politically correct because I can say some things about West Point. But it would be great experience. I'm only doing it one time, and I'm the hell out as soon yeah. as I can. And we could talk about that another day. It you, was not an enjoyable experience for me. Gotcha. You did coach. You did uh, after your service time. You did coach, right? Yeah, I coached. Yeah, I coached. I, I, I coached. I coached some high school football. I actually, Coach Seymour knows this. John Seymour. I coached at Widener University for two years in Philadelphia. I was the special teams coach for one year. I was the quarterback and wide receivers coach. I loved. I loved it. Um, I mean, <laughs> Donnie Smith's killing me, man. I got to read this one. Can I read that one for everybody? Imagine what it's like to be in the huddle with this guy on a fourth and goal. Love you. Yeah, nobody's talking in the huddle. It's just Nate. I mean, Coach Young tells me what to do, and then I tell everybody what to do. (laughs) I will tell you, one of the successes of that season, you know, is Donnie Smith. And we had the biggest offensive line, I think, in the history of the school up to that 
up to that time, we had some big guys. And Donnie, I think, played at 300 or higher. And, wow. and, 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 and dude, he destroyed folks. We that Mike Mike Ruth was an All American nose guard at Boston College. Ron Rice and Don Smith destroyed that guy. We destroyed that front line at Boston College in 1984. I mean, wow. nobody's going to talk about it, but um, just go watch the tape. They had no chance. <laughs> you know? No, I mean, I, I've talked to I've talked to Ron um, a couple times about you know past Army teams and his team and uh we had don on our podcast too i mean and don was you said don was the first um player from your era to go into the army sports hall of fame that i football, think so right? yeah, yeah yeah and you know and that was uh credit. last saturday hey, donnie by the way donnie i know you're listening and we all take credit for that by the way we all get a part of that I mean, <laughs> but, but how Keep cool is that to have a player from your era go into the hall of fame how cool nice. is that? that's that's totally cool incredible yeah. we had it we had a we had a part in that we're you know that's we, army we talk football. a lot I, that's army I football. Think we, yeah i think we talk a lot about it's great like and we'll maybe we can wrap this up now yeah about getting back to like you know because steve like me and you right we all know much about those 80s 80s teams right we all know we know that how successful they were they were but they hear, hear stories from nate about like games and memories and yeah i mean have- to me to me they're a bunch of stat you know it was just stats on paper and names on paper and yeah and you know st- you know stories you heard from people that you know remembered it right but it's it the this is why i love connecting the army brotherhood yeah because yeah, yeah. the you know more so than ever you know nate's just he he's He's a you know 20, 25 year prior version of me, right? Yeah. Like he's just a big brother to me. Yeah. And um, it's you know I hear stories and um, you know I just I, I automatically feel connected to to that. And, yeah. You know now now it's not just Nate Sassman the the quarterback that led him to the the Cherry Bowl, right? Now no, I know. Man. You know, we finally got to link up over, over. Yeah, I know. You know, and, you know, and we talk, Steve, we talk a lot about the great years, but you know, I'll never forget my visit. I was, I, my visit in 1980 was with my, my host was Al Winder. He was a wide receiver, wide receiver. And then TD Decker was one of the quarterbacks there that showed me around. Those guys had hard years. They didn't yeah. have a winning season for four years, Yeah, but they were still giving them themselves. And, you know, Al and TD, they put on a great visit for me, man. There was no like, we're like gonna like like cover something up. It was like, hey, here's the deal. This is the real deal. If you want to come here and play ball, and and I appreciate that because because yeah. we don't go to the bowls every year. I mean, that's those are we, we don't we don't get a chance to do that. It's too hard. And that's it's, what makes you know that's what makes a player and a you know an old grad now just so appreciative of what Munkin's doing. Oh man, we're just. Come we're on. just we just get winning season. It's almost expected now out of Army fans. Come on, we just yeah. we expect Army to go to a bowl every and, year. And, you know, we expect eight wins in a bowl bid. Yeah, and on. it's like it's like when you think about that, it's like what <laughs> we expect. Yeah. We were yeah. I'm gonna tell you. I think I was. Uh, we were three and eight, four and seven, and two and nine. My first three years. Yeah. Three, three and nine, three and nine, five and seven. Those are hard years, man. That's yeah. hard. Our five and seven year, we had like three games that we lost by like uh like three points or a score, um and uh it was yeah. just you know you know to think that you guys won two games the year before the eighty four season is like yeah. two, yeah, two. and then we went eight three and one. I talked to Coach Calhoun a couple years ago. He's the head coach at Air Force, and he was talking about Nate. Our first string, we could compete. We can compete with our first string. But when we lose a player, our second string player is such a massive drop off compared to the other programs we're playing. He's right. He's right. I mean, it, it, there's a huge drop off, and it's a long season, Steve. You know the deal. You got to stay healthy all the way to the end, and it's a huge drop off when we lose a starter. And it's just the it's just the way it is. It's just the way it is. Yeah, and I mean, I I, I think that's. Um, kind of the nature of the beast, right? With yeah. with recruiting and yeah. what what you're getting every year, and you know, guys that are willing, you know, because you know, 
teenagers and uh, everybody knows who's going to army. Everyone knows who's going where, right? So if they right. see a player that's, you know, better than them, that they might shy away from it or, but that's it. And then, you know, you always have the, the attrition rate, right? Like yeah. Yeah. we had great players who never yeah. saw the field because yeah. of the Academy, because of the yeah. academics, it's a hard deal, man. It's a hard deal, but I'm glad. I mean, but when you get to the end and you get the bowl game and you get the win, oh my goodness, nobody can take that nope. away from you. You got I mean, the ring, right? You got the, the ring. Oval, I'm standing in the Oval Office shaking President Reagan's hand, looking him in the eyes and going, dude, if I had a cell phone then, I would have called my mom and go, mom, I am in the Oval Office with President Reagan. Yeah. I mean, dude, that's priceless. Yeah. Priceless. You were still scared of uh, Coach Young more, though. Oh, come on, man! <laughs> Seriously, I'm going to tell you that's the. I'm, I don't want to share my conversation with Glenn Davis, but Glenn Davis feared Colonel Blake, and I kind of feared Coach Young. So yeah. we had that in common. Yeah, and, and maybe there's something to it. There might be something to it there. Yeah, Steve. yeah. <laughs> we're, we're gonna we'll, we'll wrap up the podcast now with that the story about you know, the Oval Office and uh, President Reagan. That's a that's another great one from Nate. Man, if you guys have watched this podcast, please check out part one of the Nate Sassaman podcast. This is our first two part podcast, and it was worth every minute, every second. Thanks, um, so. yeah, really appreciate it. And guys, check out the YouTube channel. Subscribe, like. You know, hit the bell for notifications so you can uh, hear us on Sunday with Jody Glor. Uh, we got some other ones coming up. We might have a podcast later in the week with an Army assistant coach. We'll have to see how that works out. But um, we're going to keep this up, and we appreciate guys like Nate Sassaman giving their time to us and to tell their stories about you know being an Army football player in life after West Point. Nate, thanks so much. Yeah, after midnight on e on Eastern Standard Time. So, Sal, you guys are going to blow this out. Thank you so much for having me these last two times. I, I, I've loved it. And, and this is what army football needs. It needs a podcast at like midnight Eastern time, you know, for, for, for our fans. That's, that, that's, that's, that's infantry, right, Steve? That's, that's what we're all about. We're that's night right. operations, man. The enemy, like you said, army foot, like Don Smith said, the, the army football never sleeps. So we're, <laughs> we're, we're all about it. So thank, thank you again, Nate. I look forward to uh, linking yeah. up here soon. Thanks guys. Appreciate it. All right, get healthy and beat Georgia State. We'll we'll do. Love love both you guys. Thank you for having me on. I really appreciate it. War, warms my warms my heart more than you know. Appreciate it. Thanks. Beat them.